Hey guys, welcome to your Brewday experience. All your equipment's been dropped off at your house. Let's go set it up. So first we're gonna set up the table. Um, it's just gonna help us get everything else organized. So on the side here, these extend, but they've got multiple, multiple lengths. So whatever you're comfortable with really is what it comes down to. This is your water. We're not going to need it right this second, so I'm just going to um, move it off to the side and then we'll kind of get back to it later. In your box, save the lid, we're going to need that. But one of the first things you can grab out of here is going to be your table topper. So just go ahead and slap that on the table and that's going to help you identify the parts of the brewing system a little bit later too as we go through this. The next most important thing really, this is your a uh, little cooler and inside the cooler there's going to be yeast and hops. Just throw the yeast in the fridge. Um, we have we have ice packs in here but you can just chuck the whole thing in the fridge and we'll get it back to it later. All right. Other than that you can just start to put this stuff to match it up with its with its spot on the table. This is called the hop spider. It goes on hop spider. Um, in here also you're gonna have a brown paper box. It's gonna say Brewday LLC on it. This is your controller for your um, brewing system. This is really the only important thing. We don't want to drop this. We don't want to get wet if we can help it. Um, it's water resistant. It's not waterproof. There are vents on the sides and everything. So we just want to, when we put it on, we want to be careful with it. We don't want to set it down on the table and spill something on it. This is the one piece of equipment that we just want to be a little bit more careful with. So these little um, standoffs will hook right into these little holes here. We'll feed, up, feed all the uh, cables right down through. I'll put it right in. We'll come back to that in a minute because that's a little bit more labor intensive to kind of go through. We also have an inline GFCI outlet. Um, this is good because we're going to be dealing with liquid. If something were to happen, this will trip, keep us all safe. Um, and we'll plug that in in a minute. This is our power cord. We'll put that over here. And for now, we're done with the box. So we can take the hot pads out. We can take the pitcher out. I'm just going to set those over here for now. And we'll move the box out of the way. These are going to be your, your bottles that you're going to end up bottling your beer in eventually. So what's actually, you don't really need to do anything with them right now. They are pre-sanitized and they're going to be pre-labeled. There's nothing you can do, do, do with these right now. Just go ahead and put these somewhere safe until you need them in about two weeks. All right, next up is this is our, our water heater. You may hear me call it called a sparge water heater. Don't worry, sparge is just a name for it. It's just a brewing term for rinsing grain. So if I slip up and I say sparge, that just means I'm gonna red, getting ready to rinse the grain. Some people might call this the sparge water heater. If you open it, you twist the top, and inside you'll find a little baggie. This little baggie of white powder is actually just your minerals that you're gonna add into your uh, water when you start to heat it. Don't need to worry about it right now, just keep it in there so you don't lose it. Next up, this is our fermenter. Now this has a spigot on the bottom. This is this is off. If you turn it on, it's going to actually uh, leak a little bit. So it is off. I may put a piece of tape across it for you. I don't have one on there right now. But this has sanitizer in it. So this is already pre-sealed, pre-sanitized, and got a little piece of tape here covering it. Don't take the tape off until I tell you, okay? This is a, um, a germ-free environment, and we want to keep it that way. It's important. We'll talk about that later. Next one, the fun one, we've got our grain bucket. So this is actually what we're brewing with today. Today we're going to be brewing a porter. Now I told you to save the lid. The lid is really handy because it's got a nice about inch and a half well here that's going to act as a spill guard. So not all of us have a nice rubberized floor that we're going to brew on today. You might be brewing your basement, you may have carpet, and just in general, brewing gets sticky, it gets a little wet. Just use it, it's there for you guys to use and it's going to keep, uh, keep things nice and tidy for you. And then we'll lift up on the, we'll just put the brewing system on, just like that. And a quick word on the brewing system. This metal rim right here is the handle. This is where, this is a load bearing structure. This is where you can pick it up. I just like to put one hand on the back, one hand on the front, and I can pick it up and move it that way. Let's go through the actual brewing system. So this, this is an electronic brewing system. The lid just comes right off. When it shows up at your house, I forgot I, I took this off a minute ago. These clips will be on it, just like this. They're not squished down. We don't want to crack the lid. They're just gonna hang right there. Just go ahead and push up on this part here. You're gonna push right up on this and they'll rotate down nice and easy. 
Next, I just put the finger, finger through here. We'll take this, and I can actually just set it right on one of these hooks. I usually just put it on the back one here so it's out of the way. Next, I'm gonna pull out. This is my upper grain screen. So you notice it has a little silicone uh, seal around it. That should be all the way around. Sometimes it comes off like that. Just make sure to replace it. It doesn't take, it's not um, too difficult. Just kind of go around the edge. That does a couple of things. We'll talk through it a little bit later. And then go ahead and put it right here, the upper grain screen. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and take the handle out. So this is the handle. We'll put the handle over on the basket handle. And then we're just gonna to start to take pieces out. This is our wart overflow pipe. And you'll find a spot, a corresponding spot on your, on your uh, table mat there for everything. This is called the grain stopper. Put it on the grain stopper spot. We'll come back to that in a bit. This is your overflow fitting. And now what I'm gonna pull out is the big monstrosity of spaghetti tubes and everything that we don't need right now. But this is actually our work chiller. So just reach down there, grab it around the barrel and pull it right out. And it'll probably have a little bit of extra hose in there. That's okay. Again, it comes in handy later. We'll set that on the table over here, right on the work chiller spot. Next, what we're gonna do is we'll grab our, our basket handle. One side's gonna go in and then I'm gonna pull it up once I get it inside. And then these have the little standoffs on it, and this is gonna come in handy later. So you'll look right here, and you have a, a wire form that's around the top here. That's actually gonna be the grain basket support. So these little standoffs sit right on it. Now if I rotate it 15 degrees or 30 degrees, it'll drop back down. So when I bring it up, I wanna rotate, make sure I rotate it, so make sure those are square in the center, and then it'll stand, sits right on top there, okay? I can go ahead and get rid of the handle for the moment. I'm just gonna put it right back on the table where it goes. I'm gonna reach down inside here, and I'm gonna check to make sure that this is in place. And as you can see, this one's not. So when we pull this out, and one of the things you wanna check is when we look at this lower grain screen. It's called the lower grain screen. This is the, uh, um, the recirculation pipe. This also has a seal on the bottom. This can come off sometimes. Uh, so what we wanna make sure is we wanna put that back on. So this does a couple different things. Namely, it, it keeps anything from falling uh, into the boil chamber, but it also protects that sharp edge, so we're not gonna score up the inside of it. But it does tend to roll, which is why it pops off like that. I cheated a little bit here. I have a spray bottle full of some, just some water. Um, you can use a wet, a wet paper towel, anything, but really we're just gonna mist the inside of this just to get it a little damp. Um, or again, you can use a wet paper towel. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it in, just to shove this sucker all the way down. Um, I'm going to put it in at a little bit of an angle, I'm going to slide it down, and I'm just watching to make sure that that edge doesn't roll. And it should more or less just fall in there as long as it's not, as long as it's got some lubricity. And we're good. So that's all set. I just want to make sure that's flat and square. And one of the ways I can check is I'm going to, this is the, the extension for the overflow pipe. It just fits on there. There's the little spring clips. The spring clips go on the down. If you put it the other way, it's just going to fall off. When I stand it up, it should be more or less vertical. So when I'm looking at it, just kind of across across the plane through the two holes here, just imagine like a T shape. If it's way off to one side, that's a pretty good indication that something's cocked, uh, uh, cockeyed in there and just I wanna go back in there and I'm just gonna gently push around the edge of that uh, seal and make sure that the seal doesn't roll, okay? So once that's set up, I'm just gonna go ahead and grab my match back, my, um, my basket handle here. And now I'm gonna look down inside here. So when I look down inside here, there should be a filter that's attached. And you can see it on the back, on the T down there. Um, if for some reason it's come off, just go ahead and take it off. And we're gonna put the black cap is gonna go away from the, the little standoff in there because that's our heat sensor. The reason we have that set up is it's set up so that this is down, this is picking up down. Um, if I flip it over, you're gonna, it's not gonna pick up properly. So again, probably not an issue, but I just wanna cover it in case you guys have a problem with it and make sure that it's in there for you, okay? So it just, it's, it's rubber, it just slips over the edge of the little pickup in there, pickup tube. Okay. I just wanna make sure that that's nice and seated right against the inside there. All right. All right, 
So for now, what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna move on to um, get everything plugged up. So a, a quick word about power. Um, this draws probably somewhere in the neighborhood of about 12 to 13 amps when it's on full. Um, a good way to think about amps is a typical household circuit in this day and age is generally 20 amps. Um, so you just want to make sure that when you have this plugged into it, um, into an outlet, that the outlet can take it. So if you don't know what that is, go ahead and plug it in. Worst case scenario is it's going to trip the, the inline GFCI outlet. It probably will trip the GFCI outlet before it would trip a breaker or anything, but I just want you to be cognizant of that. If you start to see lights dimming or something, that's something that you could be aware of. Um, and maybe we'll think about it. In our brewery here, we actually don't have a strong enough circuit on this wall, so I'm gonna run an extension cord. In the box, you guys will have um, a nice yellow extension cord. I have mine pre-plugged in here, but I'm gonna go ahead and grab that now. So in your in the box, we didn't go over before, but you'll have a uh, 50 foot length of heavy duty extension cord. This has the correct rating and everything to be able to, uh, to draw the amperage that this needs without overheating. Please use this one. If you have one of those, those thin ones that you use for your uh, leaf blower or something, there's a you know concern it could not be sufficient enough. So go. that's what we provided for you. Go ahead and use it, okay? Um, what we're gonna do is, before we forget, we're gonna go ahead and uh, plug in the GFC outlet. They are lit, so you'll be able to tell that the power's coming in, power's going through, and this should be dead until I, until I um, flip to reset. When I go to reset, now I've got power. If it trips, I don't have power. It's just a good visual indicator for you there as well. So next we're gonna go back to our, our control box here. So on the control box, if we pull this back out, this has a number of different connections on the bottom. There's, so there's three different connections. Each of the power plugs that we're gonna plug into this only has, can only fit in one. So just be aware of that when you're putting it on. And also we're gonna feed all of the power plugs through the metal hoop. This little gray thing here, this is actually a temperature sensor. So we wanna make sure that we're not pinching that um, on that metal rim. So we're gonna feed that through first. We don't actually wanna connect it yet uh, because we may need to move this up and down and up and down. We'll put that in last. So I'm just gonna set this on here for the moment. And I'm just gonna start to plug stuff up. So this is our main power cord. This is the one we're gonna plug into our extension cord eventually. But for now, if you remember this one goes right in the middle. It only goes in one spot but I need to make sure that I'm feeding it up through the metal part. Next, I'm gonna just, in sequence here, I'm just gonna feed these up through. So again, this only goes in one place. It's got a pretty short cord, so now I'm, I'm getting into the point where I've gotta kinda only fit stuff in one way. And then we just make sure that those little standoffs are in place, and we're all set. We don't want to forget this. If we forget to put this in, it gets really funny really fast because this unit won't know that this is not getting hot. So it'll keep making it hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter. And the computer will just say, it's not getting hotter. <laughs> so this is our temperature sensor. This goes right in here. It's called the thermo well or the temperature port. So we're just gonna stick that right in there. Nothing fancy, just stick it in until it stops, okay? Then the last thing here, we have this marked here. This is, this is our master power switch. If this isn't on, similar to the temperature sensor not being in place, the unit won't actually heat, it won't actually turn on. So we wanna make sure that that's on. It's, so right now it is on already. The other quick one is when the heat's on, this should be illuminated red. So when you see the heater on, uh, just as another, another double check, we're just gonna make sure that that's up, up is on. Then we're gonna go ahead and plug it in. So when we plug it in, the screen should come on. If it doesn't, we wanna go back through and make sure that our connections are correct. Now, ours is not on because we haven't actually gone through and turned on our inline GFCI, because you'll note, just as a quick check again, orange to orange, no orange. Now we're orange, and now our screen's coming on as well. So now we're ready to add some water. And that's our setup for now.